In this video, I will show you how to access the regulatory information and what data you can find. You can access ECA CHEM at chem.eca.europa.eu or through search for chemicals on the ECA's website. On the landing page, you will see below the search bar two additional blocks. To the left, you will see the legal obligations that apply to certain chemicals. And to the right, you will see the regulatory activities by authorities. I will now show you how to access the information both via the regulatory list and via the substance search. First, I will show you how to find the regulatory information for a substance on ECACEM via the substance search. Here, I can do a simple substance search using a chemical identifier such as an EC or a cast number or a chemical name. I will use the substance formaldehyde as an example. The search results show all substances containing the word formaldehyde in their names. To view the regulatory information of formaldehyde, I will click on the name of the substance. This will direct me to the Substance Overview page, where all available information on the substance is in ECACEM is shown. The legal obligations and regulatory activities information for the substance can be easily found in dedicated blocks. Now, let's take a closer look at the information we can find in each of them. On the left, we have a list of all different legal obligations available for the substance. The number that appears on top of the block is the total number of list entries for this substance. The block shows the most recent entries for the substance. If I click on all legal obligations, I can see all legal obligations related to the substance. For formaldehyde, we can quickly see that there are three obligations to entries in the European positive list, under the drinking water, and one in the REACH restriction list. To see more detailed information about the REACH restriction for formaldehyde, I can click on the restriction list. The top part contains the obligation details. This is a summary with the most relevant information about the legal obligation, such as the substance name and identifiers, the entry number and the conditions of the re REACH restriction. The bottom part contains the so-called regulatory outcomes. Here I can see the date when the substance was added to the restriction list and all related documents. If the entry has been amended, then the updates will appear in chronological order, so I can see the evolution of the entry over time. If I click on the link Regulation, I will be directed to the EURLEX website where all the conditions of this restriction are stated. The link Appendix contains additional information related to the specific restrictions, when available. Now, let's go back to the Substance Overview page for formaldehyde. On the right of the obligations, we have the list of the different regulatory activities available for the substance. The number that appears on top of the blog is the total number of regulatory processes where this substance has been or will be assessed. The most recent activities are listed here. For formaldehydes, these include harmonized classification under the CLP regulation, as well as the REACH dossier and substance evaluation. If I click on all regulatory activities, I can see all ongoing slash close activities related to the substance. If, for example, I want to see more detailed information about the substance evaluation process for formaldehyde, I can click on Substance Evaluation. The top part contains the activity details. This is a summary with the most relevant information about this regulatory process, such as the substance name and identifiers the evaluation year and evaluating member state, and the concerns identified. Just below, under additional information, I can find the remarks and related documents, if any. 
The bottom part of the page contains the timeline of the substance evaluation process. Here, I can see the date when the process is started and access information related to each process step, such as the hazard, assess, and related documents. At the bottom, I can find the substance evaluation conclusion by the evaluating member state. Next, let's go back to ECACAM landing page and see how to start the navigation directly from the regulatory list. As an example, I will use the reach restriction list under the legal obligations. By clicking on the restriction list, I will see that all the entries on the list. At the top of the page, I can see a short description of the reach restriction list. By default, this information will be appear collapsed, but if I click on that, the window will expand to show the whole text. Underneath, I can find the restriction list in table format. On the left side of the table marked in yellow, the substance name and identifier's name are shown as available. To the right, you have the information specific for each legal obligation list. In the case of the reach restriction list, this includes the entry number, the conditions of the restrictions, and the link to see the obligations details. By clicking on a substance name, I am directly directed to the substance overview page, which we just look at when navigating via the substance search. Similarly, the view obligations details will take me to the same page with the details about the restriction as I reach from the substance overview. I can download the entire reach restriction list in Excel format by clicking on Download Full List at the top of the right corner on the table. The regulatory lists come with the basic functionalities to interact with the data, such as column base, sorting, and another feature is the toggle button on the top right called Show All Substances in Scope. It expands the list to include substances that are impacted by the obligations as member of a group entry. When the toggle button is set to show all substances in scope, there is a symbol in the substance name column for substances that have been included in the table via group entries. I can also search a list for a specific chemical. For example, here I enter formaldehyde to search the rich restriction list. Like this, I can quickly find out if a substance of my interest is included in the list, or reduce the list to entries containing a word specific. With export results, I can export the list as it looks after search or after including group members. Next, let's go back to ECACAM landing page and access the entry in the Identification of Substance of Very High Concern, or SVHC, activity list from here. I will click on the SVHC activity list to see all substances that have been included in the process of identifying SVHC. Similar to the obligation list presented earlier, there is a process description on top of the page, followed by the list of entries in table format. In the case of the SVHC activity list, the columns include the current stage of the activity and the current stage date, the submitter, the reasons for proposal and the link to view the details of the activity. Also, in the activity list, I can toggle the button on the top right to include the substances that are member of a group entry in the list. I can use the search function on the top left to search for a list for a specific substance. I can export the table in Excel format by clicking on Export Results. Using Download Full List, I get the list with the activity details also included. Thank you for watching. I hope this video has helped you to get familiar with ECACAM regulatory list. For additional information and assistance, visit our support page that offers a lot of material to guide you in using our chemicals database. If you have questions, contact us by clicking on the support button in ECACAM. Thank you and goodbye.